Hello, welcome to another session of Forbes India Facebook Live. Uh, we have a very distinguished guest here, uh, Pushpa Aman Singh, who's uh, in the world of philanthropy well known. And, and today is a very special day. Uh, it's called Dan Utsav, which people of course understand uh, globally as a, as a version of uh, Give India. And uh, we want to understand really, it's been a journey of nine years that uh, Dan Utsav has taken. People understand the concept of giving, but it, you know, where, where there are gaps, what we understand when we speak to experts is that very often people don't know uh, how much to give, where to give, and to whom to give. Uh, India has seen a mix of CSR activity, which has picked up high net worth individuals who are extremely uh, you know, active in, in, in philanthropy, but at an individual level, we have found that there are still gaps. And that's where the genesis of Dan Utsav came. And uh, we would want to understand from Pushpa, who is a veteran in the field for about 18 years, in building these kind of institutions. She's, she's been uh, involved uh, very deeply with uh, Give India as a CEO, and now is the CEO of GuideStar India. Pushpa, we want to understand first, welcome to the studio. And we want to understand from you, really, what is Give India all about? Uh, uh, Give Tuesday, Giving Tuesday all about? And Dan Utsav. Where does Dan Utsav uh, really find its genesis? And what relevance does it have today in the modern India? Thank you. Um, Dan Utsav started way back in 2009. And incidentally, Guidestar India was born in the same year. Um, it started with a thought in the heads of many volunteers that if we have to create a culture of giving in our country, um, then we need to kind of uh, take it beyond organizations, uh, make it something that's so easy and simple. Uh, you know, like when we are celebrating Diwali or Dashera or any of our festivals, Eid or Christmas, you don't need someone's permission. You don't need to figure out what to do. Uh, so the idea was how do we make giving like a part of our general living and how, and the thought about having a festival when everyone is doing the same thing, you know, the wonderful things that festivals do in the retail business. Or so it could be a Black Friday or things like that. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so the idea of Dan Utsa was to create this period every year in India, starting with Gandhi Jayanti, so 2nd to 8th of October, that people from different walks of life, whether you're in a company, you go to a school or college, we all can do a range of things. And you'll be happy to know that more than 60 lakh people uh, celebrated Dan Utsav last year. And this year, if we go by what's been happening yesterday and today, I think it's going to really overtake maybe a crore of Indians. It's still a small number but, looking but, to our population, yeah. but still very encouraging. And Giving Tuesday has been there for five years. It was born in the US. Um, so after this heavy shopping season during Thanksgiving, uh, Black Friday, you keep getting all kinds of deals for yourself. And then you go online for your discounts on Cyber Monday. Uh, Giving Tuesday is a day of reflection, using social media and other collaborations, you know, to come together and to pay it forward to be actually giving. And uh, the wonderful thing for India now is that uh, while the rest of the world, 98 countries celebrate on 28th of November this year, uh, Giving Tuesday India, our first ever Giving Tuesday, is going to be a part of Dan Utsav. Great. It is a part of Dan Utsav. We started off this morning with many people from all over the world welcoming Giving Tuesday, you know, the 30 different I see Bill Gates partners. Having a, yeah, it was yeah. wonderful to see a post from Bill Gates yeah. on Facebook this right. morning. And uh, so these are two very inclusive things, Dan Utsav and Giving Tuesday. And like Venkat uh, Krishnan, you know, who kind of was one of the key volunteers of Dan Utsav said that perhaps our world requires something like these two inclusive things coming together. Right. So um, maybe you could tell us something really of the journey that Dan Utsav has taken. Uh, in, these, in these eight years, what have you actually seen? Uh, what is it that uh, people uh, at an individual level can do? Uh, what is it uh, and how do they go about it? Uh, because we... You know, inherently we found that as a society, as a culture, uh, we're comfortable. We're comfortable with the concept of wanting to give. Uh, but I think somewhere what happens is that either, you know, online we are less, you know, we're less uh, comfortable doing that. Uh, 
but we are happy you know at at a at a corporate or at an inst institutional level uh what happens at an individual level what is lacking that that needed this movement to come in the first place so somewhere you know uh, we're so busy with our lives and uh, the reasons that kind of drive each of us to reach out and do are so varied uh so not everyone feels i mean many people feel strongly about education and health but there are also so many other issues so one of the big gaps i think is information that there's so much happening around us in our daily lives whether you're online or you're in a mall or you know you're in your neighborhood you could actually be giving and it's just that you know when non-profits are quietly working away from the glare even organizations working say in mumbai city uh if you ask people around they may not really realize but when dan utsav happens you you hear about it on tv you see it in the papers you you kind of hear everyone doing something so, so what, in, yeah what, I'll, i'll stop you what yeah. could i do as a as a media person if can i also uh, so you're doing the most wonderful thing of having this chat okay um but yes i mean like you know i i'm told like access bank worldly has a wish tree set up there by light of life trust so if you happen to be there look at the wish tree and see the little wishes that you can uh, you know maybe ranging from 50 to 500 to 1000 rupees you can actually convert wishes into fruits and it could be as simple as that um there are uh, you know i think uh, anamrita has, has a kichdi booth at the dn uh, i think at andheri metro so while you sample kichdi just pause and talk to people and understand what are the issues how much does it take uh to offer a midday meal to a child and how does that then keep the child in school and lead to education so i would say you know whether there are these wish trees or you see something on the on the atm you see uh, you know messages flashing uh, there are lots of crowdfunding portals you ask me you know what's been the difference between then and now in the 9 years so there's a lot of collection going on in housing societies and malls and offices but also a lot happening online you have uh people like impact guru and milap and small change keto and give also, india yeah. and keto and everyone has got a campaign happening on giving tuesday india and dhanutsav uh this time you know keeping in with the demonetization uh there's a new mobile app called be now and okay. there's going to be a concerts called give now um so you know the whole giving thing is also kind of keeping up with uh the new modes of giving uh there's in fact a payment solutions company focused on giving called dana mojo so uh so folks whether you know you are at your office or you are at home uh for all the seven days and beyond in fact these seven days are actually great to try out various things and does it only work towards i mean which are those areas where where india uh, really needs more which are those which are those critical areas i mean yes education and healthcare come very yes. clearly to mind um, uh, but if you ask me i would say we have need in every single area every okay. single area uh there's first of all lot of patchy information on uh which are underserved areas but i can tell you this need exists in every single area we work with more than 8000 ngos across the country and not one of them will say we don't need any resources or help so certainly there is need uh if you dig a little deeper so the beauty of this is today you know using a lot of matchmaking software and tools and websites you can actually whatever you feel like supporting you can find a cause you can find an organization you can actually reach them in a couple of clicks and, and i could giving. i could do it on my mobile i could absolutely, do it on absolutely absolutely okay okay so uh maybe you could tell us a little bit about uh the the global one the global picture mm -hmm. of really uh, what would happen on november 28th across the world uh, when you're talking about uh, sure. giving tuesday you know so the 30 plus countries that have global leaders like we are here in india uh thinking through various campaigns uh in fact we have a whatsapp group that shares a lot of learning across countries uh there are toolkits for schools and colleges for universities for uh you know uh sports people uh for groups of people for companies and uh, so rest of the world you will see a number of activities being announced and done in fact a lot of influencers give their time and you know talk about causes uh there are also entire cities and citizens groups that are taking up issues um and back home in india uh we've just made a beginning and uh, it's wonderful to see like this morning um we had a message from dr mufassal lakrawala who is a bariatric surgeon talking about how doctors can give back 
He's in fact announced that Tuesdays, uh, you know, at Safi Hospital, they're going to have uh, uh, an open gen Janta OPD. Um, there is a group, I think in half an hour from now, they're going to be a group of finance professionals who are going to be giving their time online for NGOs to ask questions on legal and finance stuff. Um, there are, uh, you know, a bunch of people uh, uh, saying that, you know, uh, we, we want to start volunteering. While it's a nice thing to be painting walls, to be talking to kids, the number of opportunities to mentor. So if you're a corporate employee, you could perhaps set out an hour and be a mentor to a youth, uh, talking to them about job opportunities, giving them career guidance. So today, so this, this, yeah. this really extends beyond a Tuesday. I mean, really, right? I mean, I can sure. do it at any point of the year. Is that what we, what you want to uh, bring oh, across? Yes, the message is use Giving Tuesday India, the Danutsiv period, to actually take out a little time and look at opportunities because they're going to be overwhelmingly in your face right. and try them out and then start engaging because uh, most of the NGOs are going to be giving you back stories of how you made a difference and then you can slowly start your journey through the year. And if you're already doing round the year, this is a time to just talk more about it and engage your friends, tell them, you know, I work with this nonprofit, come down and, you know, let's do this thing together and then give more people an opportunity to experience the joy of giving. Right, right. And maybe you can talk about really also the genesis of your uh, organization, you know, GuideStar. Uh, I, I understand obviously you take, uh, you know, uh, various practices from, from the US uh, uh, parent, uh, but maybe you could just talk about really uh, where, what was the genesis of that and uh, why it is so important in the Indian uh, system. Mm -hmm. Why did it? Why did it come about in the first place? Because we we see it as 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 a kind of a credit bureau, as a kind of a vetting institution mm -hmm. for eight thousand NGOs, which yeah. you spoke about earlier. Uh, but why was it required now? Sure, sure. So uh, it's been a long journey for me in this sector, and I used to work at Give India, right. and uh, we used to get calls and inquiries from donors uh, to find an organization. Say we had this. Uh, NRI from Singapore who actually wanted an NGO that was working in uh, the village Tilekani in uh, it's actually Tikekani in uh, Orissa because that village had most of the hockey players from India coming and then he read a, an article in a newspaper saying that the village doesn't have electricity. Um, we had another Swiss couple who got in touch saying, uh, you know, I want an NGO within two hours of driving distance from Mumbai International Airport because I can take out one day of my year uh, to go and meet and give. So when you have such precise requirements, specifications, if I could say so, finding a nonprofit um, that also meets all requirements like good governance, compliances and stuff, and you want to meet or uh, match the desire, what drives the donor to give, and you know the requirements. Uh, it's not easy, you need a lot of information like we would do in the corporate sector. So when I was working in financial services, I mean you always had data to help right. drive decisions. And that and, I think is lacking in India, yeah, right? Yeah, and, uh, and worldwide as well. Yeah. So that's what kind of guides in the US many years ago when this guy called Buzz Schmidt founded it. He said when it comes to making important decisions philanthropically, whether you're giving small amounts of money or big amounts of money, we all want to make a big difference, right? And how do you give like the maximum bang for the buck, if I can say? How do you get it unless you know where, what is needed and how it works? Um, so in 2004, October, I happened to represent Give India in an online social change marketplaces meeting in South Africa and came across the story of GuideStar, which is a simple database and allows every single nonprofit to tell its story. Um, uh, and you know, uh, the database is structured in a way that it's easy for nonprofits to keep themselves updated. So I was reminded then, you know, of the days of yellow pages when by the time the directory is ready and printed, much of the data is gone. Right. And GuideStar concept seemed really wonderful that people can self update. Uh, but our journey has been quite different from the GuideStar in the US, UK and other countries where government already has all of the data and GuideStar played a role in digitizing and organizing the information. Whereas in India, you know, with so many different states having their own nonprofit registrations and registrars and many of them haven't kept up with digitization, um, there was a need to at least have several thousand organizations if not the 3.3 million that you 
keep hearing about so that people are able to kind of figure out. So I want to work with say women, um, help them with livelihoods in Kanyakumari. It should be possible for me to go online and do a search. So guidestarindia.org today allows you to get at least a couple of search results and organizes the information so that you can compare and pick a partner. Right. So when, when somebody is looking for, a, for an institution to give to, what, what are those two, three elements that they specifically need to look for or keep in mind? Uh, yeah. Um, that's a tough one. So we realized, you know, soon after setting up Guide Stein, and as the database started growing, uh, just having ton of information and documents there is very overwhelming and sometimes, you know, it's so hard to make sense of that. Um, so we kind of launched something called Guides to India certification in 2015. So today it's easy for you. You can watch out for these uh, seals or labels that can c inspire confidence. You know, we have the platinum, the gold, silver, and something called a transparency badge and key. So, you know, that kind of says uh, pretty much like credit rating in the corporate. Right. Uh, so we, these, these symbols don't talk, look at the programmatic impact as yet, but at least they tell you that these are organizations that are active, well-governed, and they definitely... And transparent. Transparent, absolutely. Like the platinum level of organizations put uh, something called a tra transparency disclosure template that virtually has all the data points that one would need how many, to make a consumer How many decisions. NGOs are at that platinum uh, uh, level? So it's still a very small number, uh, still touching 100. Okay. But the happy, the good news is, you know, 900 organizations have gone through the process at different levels and qualified. And actually, there's a big need there and where people could come in. Uh, you know, if you're a chartered accountant, if you're even good with communications, you can volunteer time for nonprofits to tell their story, to help them, you know, be more transparent. The intent is very strong. And yet, you know, very rarely we come across NGOs who are not comfortable putting out information. It's like I want to do it, but I need help to do it. So if there are folks out there, you know, you can write in to us and connect with, connect directly with NGOs and tell them, I can help you, you know, make sense of your financial statements. Because what we yeah. have found also is that uh, very often, you know, NGOs come with a very strong purpose. So you have a founder who's, who's extremely uh, visionary in some ways, but he or she may not have been able to build that second level of leadership, you know, so that succession planning also becomes a critical issue for these kind of NGOs as they grow in size. Is that, is that something that you uh, have seen? Um, so that recently we had the Bridgespan group bring right. out a report yeah, on this. Yeah, we reviewed that. Yeah. Yes. So I would suggest that people should look at that. It's a it's a topic, uh, you know, that requires a lot of thought. There are organizations like Dasra and others. You know, I, I'm a Synergos fellow, and Synergos has invested in me. I'm now undergoing the Dasra leadership program. So yes, we we all need a lot of investment in human capacity, certainly. And the beauty of the nonprofit sector is plenty of opportunity and flexibility. Um, most of my team members, we give lots of flexibility. Many of them are mothers who've come back to work. Uh, so that's like the nonprofit sector is uh, is a is a wonderful place for people to you know do part time to come back, and uh, the sense of satisfaction is amazing. Okay, and and which uh, in in your experience here at GuideStar. Uh, What's, what's the change that you've been noticing within the Indian system of, of NGOs and how they are functioning? Is it starting to make a difference? Oh, yes. Um, so in two weeks, almost, uh, we have more than 200 NGOs that managed to complete a certification or a due diligence process for Giving Tuesday India. Uh, they have been tweeting and posting pictures and stuff. So they've embraced social media pretty well. Uh, the people who called a couple of years ago and said we didn't we don't have email IDs that doesn't seem to be the problem anymore people are using their smartphones very brilliantly so there has been a, a great change in embracing uh, technology, technology new yeah. technology uh, also technology is now helping us to you know be more comfortable in our own language so I think language was a big barrier in the development space but now you can you know do a video and you can directly show the impact on what's happening on the ground. So this is great. And there have been lots of initiatives to bring volunteers or, you know, the talent from corporate India to the nonprofit space. So these are big changes we're seeing. 
and uh, more and more NGOs want to professionalize themselves. So be it communication, be it finance, be it legal uh, stuff, uh, they're all up and you know wanting to grow and wanting to do better. And, uh, and it's a healthy space because people are still very passionate about their cause and their values. We all are very mission driven, but also learning to be, uh, you know, con making connections with others, with industry right. and with other parts of the sector. A lot of people do, and the, the best thing is when you have government, nonprofit, and the corporate sector coming together and doing partnerships. Right. So what more can we expect now? Uh, yes, there's, there's Giving Tuesday, which would come or what are the other activities which, which you think would start to make a difference uh, in, in the world of philanthropy here in India and, and elsewhere? What, what, what's really up in the calendar? That um, So in my view, you know, we tend to kind of make silos or buckets of this is individual philanthropy, this is corporate philanthropy, this is institutional philanthropy. I think ultimately we are all people, you know, behind institutions. Right. Uh, and many of us wear multiple hats, right? So if we could start looking at what is the change I can make? What is the change I can make as a mother? What is the change I can make as a, uh, an employee? What is the change I can make uh, you know, in my local community group? Um, and what is the, you know, so if we start looking at that, taking more responsibility. So you, you started yourself in the mirror, I guess, and, and then you start yes, making the change. Yes, and look at your strengths, see right. your networks. And it's important now, I think the beautiful thing about so many crowdfunding portals is it allows each of us to become a fundraiser. So, you know, uh, the job of raising money for the hard work that NGOs do on the ground, uh, I've seen it now over the years and I think it'll be beautiful if nonprofits and social workers and focus on the work on the ground and a lot of people uh, from other walks of life start owning up issues, using their networks and start kind of... Uh, you know, raising resources and attention for this and bringing our networks to support this. For me, Giving Tuesday India is that platform which will allow everybody to come and put their uh, best talents and their abilities and networks to use. Great. Thank, Thank you, you very much, uh, Pushpa, for, for having a very engaging chat. Uh, we hope that uh, this, not only Dan Tuesday, but, but you know, various other programs uh, will at least push each one of us towards sure. a little more, you know, starting to give that little more that we can give back to society. Thank you sure. very much it's been a uh, for attending another Thank session. You. Thank you. Thank you.